Tonight, council forums cancelled in Port Augusta due to risk to public health and safety. And stories of Indigenous elders told through song. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with Louise Hedger begins now. Good evening. Ongoing threats to public health and safety have forced Port Augusta's council to make the decision to cancel its community forums. Frustrated members say they're fed up with abusive behaviour, arguing it's their obligation to implement the change. A community forum gone rogue. Council has now axed their fortnightly Q&A amid increasing fears someone will get hurt. You know need to be raising voices and yelling and shouting in, a, in an environment like that, um, particularly where we did decide to run these forums in our library to be a social area and cohesive area. The decision announced last night and residents are reeling, saying it's unfair to those who want to participate respectfully. I think everyone should have a say. That sort of stuff needs to, ha needs to stop because uh, Community input into uh, what happens in your local area is of extreme importance. Many locals confused to why the perpetrators weren't just asked to leave. The ones that are causing the strife should be t get taken out of the meeting and have, uh, other, let others have their say. Not so good, but anyway, that shouldn't happen. It shouldn't, they should be taken outside or something. The mayor responding to these questions, saying that it's not possible. Uh, no, unfortunately we, we can't do that. I mean, people have a right to speak. Um, that's just unfortunate the way this speaking is occurring. Um, we don't stop anybody coming to com the community forums and asking questions and, and seeking answers, but it's to, in a controlled manner. The council is optimistic that future meetings will be reignited with locals still eager to get involved and have their say. A change to the policy for the community forum and a different program will be set up where there'll be a specific date set for the forum to occur and the engagement and consultation will happen in a controlled manner. More information on the changes can be found on the Council's website. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Drought-stricken farmers have been thrown a lifeline today with more than $82 million in federal funds being made available. As part of the initiative, farmers crippled by the drought will be able to make use of up to $3,000 in funding support. The money is set to help stimulate local infrastructure initiatives. Over the past three years, more than $180 million in drought relief has been committed. The Mission Songs Project is featuring Imwaela tonight, performing historic Australian Indigenous songs and telling stories of their elders. Our reporter Sophia Contagonis got an exclusive look before the show, along with some little kindergarten supporters. A private preview before tonight's big show. One day a Singing meaningful lyrics relating to an important time in our history, the missions era. Well, I'm very passionate about this project. It's been exciting to um, use music as a way to explore um, a corner of Australia's history that hasn't really been accessible before. Jessie Lloyd is the lead singer of the group, performing a collection of unique songs she has found and revived from around Australia. She will also be retelling important stories from her elders. The, the historical records that we do have from the mission days are usually written by the missionaries or the administrators and, and these songs are uh, first-hand accounts of, of the residents that used to live there. Jessie will be accompanied by two special guests, Shelley Morris and Joe Geyer, Jessie's proud father. This project's really important to me. My grandmother was stolen generation and grew up in a mission, or they called them camps, in those days. And I'm also an adopted Aboriginal person. Most of uh, the stories and songs are, are of... Um, my people. Uh, there's a song there that my mother uh, wrote. Excited little supporters eager to sing. We invited the little kinder kids from Gabimidi Manu and they've come along to meet the artist today. The children shared their self-portrait artwork with the performers and spent the afternoon singing songs together. I love making songs. 
Mission Songs Project will be travelling to Port Augusta next, a place Jessie holds close to her heart. I spent a bit of time in Port Augusta with um, some of the Amiwara mission families and during that time we also wrote a song. The song will be premiered at the Desert Fringe on Saturday night. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Dozens of yachts are preparing to hit the water tomorrow for the 70th Adelaide to Port Lincoln Yacht Race. This year's event is attracting some big names with Matt Allen's Itchy Barn set to defend his title after last year's win. One of the biggest sailing events on Port Lincoln's calendar now preparing for its 70th year. You can expect something very special in that uh, although it's not the biggest fleet we've had, it certainly is uh, the highest quality. More than 42 yachts will hit the water tomorrow for the iconic Adelaide to Lincoln Yacht Race. Organisers say this will be an event unlike any other, with some of the best sailors and yachts from across Australia competing. We've got two Maxis, uh, we've got six TP-52s, which is a Grand Prix class of, of ocean-going yachts, and um, oh, some pretty special boats. Last year's winner and recent victor of the Sydney to Hobart race, Ichiban, set to make a return and defend her title. It puts us on the international map essentially. Um, this is a, um, a going to assist us with having an international uh, profile for the larger yachts. All eyes will be on new competitor Chinese Whisper, the 65-foot maxi, one of the biggest yachts to compete in the event. I think they're going to break the record. Chris Williams Morticia holds the current race record of 11 hours and 23 minutes, set back in 2014. Organisers say a strong wind expected for tomorrow night could see that record tumble. We expect um, the first boats to get in about two o'clock, so around about 12 hours. It's expected more than 500 sailors will flood the town, bringing with them a big economic boost to the region. These vessels bring in uh, a lot of crew, uh, a lot of support people, and, um, and that creates a, a, a great business opportunity for people that have got accommodation and for food and service outlets. The event kickstarts a four-day regatta in the Towns Bay on Monday. There'll be plenty of places where you'll be able to, to watch it from the shore and it'll be worth watching. The race starts tomorrow at 3pm in Adelaide. I'm looking forward to it. We've never seen anything like in South Australia. Nathan Rector, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, history to be made in Broken Hill this weekend with a very special basketball game and a tuna polling adventure departing Port Lincoln tomorrow. Welcome back. A team of Broken Hill's best basketball players have held their final training ahead of a big game this weekend. The side will be taking on a South Australian Premier League squad on Saturday night. The local association hoping for a big crowd to come and cheer them on. Honing their skills before taking on some of SA's best. By all accounts, some very classy players, but I'm sure our boys will be able to match it. On Saturday night, this all-star team of Broken Hill players will square off against SA Premier League side Central Districts. It's the Broncos versus the Lions. The side holding their final training this week, working on their pick and rolls and give and goes before taking the court to represent the city. Players excited to be lining up, testing their skills against some serious competition. Hopefully uh, we get a bit of a go and uh, they take it easy on us, which will be nice. But uh, yeah, all the boys are pretty pumped, so you know we'll uh, take as it comes and get out there and have a bit of fun. Pretty excited, pretty nervous at the same time. It's going to be a really good opportunity to verse some players out of town, especially coming from Adelaide. It's going to be a good, good experience. Boys. The idea for the exhibition game came when the association was looking to refurbish its courts. The person they contacted had connections at Central Districts and floated the idea. The all-star team made up of a range of different players and styles. Agile movers such as Liam King and Clancy Payne will be looking to make it rain from beyond the arc. While tall man Jordan Holmes grabs the rebounds and putbacks and Mitch Henderson throws down slams like a broken hill LeBron. Returning coach Coach Jay Tremelling says there hasn't been a game like this since 1995. It's been a, a, over a 20 year hiatus, so come and have a look and see what your uh, locals are like, all, all the, the youngsters that are coming through, the, 
Uh, they're keen as mustard. A curtain raiser match featuring the city's best juniors will also be played. The association aiming to create an atmosphere like that of an NBL game. Hoping for a very, very strong crowd, a very boisterous crowd to lift the roof off and get behind our Broken Hill team. Doors open at 5 o'clock with the junior match starting at 5.30. Locals are invited to come along and support some of Broken Hill's best and brightest basketball players. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. A dozen Port Lincoln fishers are set to go on a journey back in time tomorrow with the Tacoma polling trip setting sail. The three-day adventure will put its sailors to the test, catching tuna the old-fashioned way. With their tuna poles in hand, these passengers are gearing up for a weekend fishing adventure like no other. Very excited. It's been a long time coming for me, polling some tuna. The annual tuna polling trip attracts dozens of eager fishers to the town each year, learning the historic way to catch tuna, which helped build Port Lincoln into what it is today. My dad was one of the first tuna pollers. Um, and taking after the tradition. The three-day adventure will take these new recruits out into the open ocean on board the Tacoma, Australia's first purpose-built tuna fishing boat. This vessel not only is it historic to Port Lincoln but to the state and you know and to the nation actually you know the, the Australia's first tuna tuna boat right here in Port Lincoln how proud are we? Port Lincoln's tuna industry was opened back in the 1950s on the Tacoma. Using the pole method sailors would catch hundreds of fish to sell back in town. It's a uh, historic to Port Lincoln. It's important to get involved in this sort of stuff. We're in the tuna industry. I've been learning about it for a long time and I figured why not. Just like the sailors of the past, passengers will use poles to help catch and throw the tuna onto the boat, pairing up to help lift the 20 kilogram fish out of the ocean. We work in teams with our double poles. Which, which also brings in another element of coordination, which can be quite hilarious to watch. It takes a bit of practice, but after a few tries with a fake tuna, they eventually get it on board. Out in the ocean, the fishers will use the rocking of the boat to help snag their prize. To help you flick the tuna back on board over your shoulder. The crew will set sail tomorrow. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Kadena's SA Water Depot is setting a new trend by showcasing a water efficient landscaping project. 300 locally sourced plants are on display, enticing locals to replicate the idea in their own homes. A native garden, an eye catching new addition to this once plain block. Has seen us introduce 34 local species, local to Northern York Peninsula, that we have selected to highlight all the exciting different life forms that can be used in gardening. The team handpicking this resistant flora that can handle the York Peninsula's harsh weather conditions. Survived a cracking heat wave this summer and it's coming through really well and we're just really looking forward to how it's going to develop over the years. Working hand in hand with the local Aboriginal Business Stone Environmental Branch, they say it's a good opportunity for residents to replicate the designs. Show the community of a, a wide scale plants that they can do in their own homes. So yeah, it was a great opportunity for us guys, Stone Environmental. Most of us are Indigenous uh, workers. Um, to work on land is always a great opportunity to provide the community of what native plants are. The community could come past and have a look at it any time um, using local community uh, members to collect the seed and, and plant the garden out. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. The first heat for the million dollar pace race in Broken Hill and a large mural livens up Wyala. Welcome back. A major New South Wales harness racing event which sees trainers vie for a seven-figure payday will start in Broken Hill in May. Silver City trainers get the chance to share in $1.5 million worth of prize money. It's called the Million Dollar Pace Race. I think we'll have no problem whatsoever in filling, filling those two full heats for Broken Hill. Effectively a knockout structure, the state's trots, drivers and trainers will soon take part in a series of races, looking to qualify for the final at the end of May. The event opened to New South Wales trained pace horses four years and older. Broken Hill will kick off proceedings with two local preliminary heats. Well, from Broken Hill, you'll go up via Cobar and back down to Dubbo, win a heat at Dubbo, and, and from there you'll move on to Bathurst. Another success, 
until you finally get to um, Tabcorp Park, Menangle. The final is a million dollar race, but there's close to $500,000 available across the other heats and qualifiers. The pace race, now the second million dollar event behind the Miracle Mile. The Western Districts, which we've included Broken Hill in, and of course there's the River Arena, the North Western Hunter in the metropolitan area. So each of those regions will have representatives in that million dollar final. Local trainers are being encouraged to start thinking about their nominations now. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Installation of a $1.6 million lighting project has begun in Broken Hill. City Council saying locals will soon see some new permanent lighting and projection displays around town. The lighting will be customisable. We can, you know, sort of mix and match it for events such as, uh, you know, some pats or fundraisers or, or things like that. It'll just give us a bit of, bit of flexibility in how we present the town. The project is jointly funded by Council and State Government. Giant books and African street art have been added to the walls of the Wyala Public Library, creating a colourful mural. Council says the new artwork is a way of promoting the library, encouraging locals to head inside and see what's on offer. A striking new feature sure to grab attention. We wanted it to stand out for the community. We've done a lot of work inside the library to upgrade it and make it a bit more modern and progressive for people. Um, and we decided the outside needed to have some love and attention too. And it wasn't a decision thought of overnight with many discussions held around the theme, traditional or modern. In the end, sticking with what the library knows best. We thought the best representation of a library is books, even now. Sinorama coming on board to print the mural with installation only taking six hours. We created some concepts for her to consider. Um, we ended up deciding on the one behind us and uh, after that we uh, printed and produced here in Wyala and uh, installed by the Sonorama Wyala team. This week a special edition was added. African artists drawing a large mural of an Aboriginal boy on the opposite side. This is supposed to represent cultures coming together you know we have like three cultures represented by the artists who are working on this mural at the moment. It's all about facilitating intercultural understanding giving our artists an opportunity to, to work with um, or Australian artists an opportunity to work with artists of different cultural backgrounds. Council say it's bringing the library into the 21st century with modern technology available for use inside and this bold colourful street art to match here on the exterior of the building. It definitely stands out and um, it definitely achieves what it was aimed to do, uh, as in people can see that uh, it's a library now, straight away. For those that haven't visited the library in a long time, it's probably a great idea to stop by and see what we've got available. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us coming up after the break this week's Fish and Tips and we'll have the weather with Brit. Hello again. Time now to hear from the experts with this week's Fish and Tips. Welcome another week around the golf fishing tips. Last weekend was such a beautiful weekend. Out I go fishing and all that sort of stuff. The crabs are on, but you had to work really hard. Wasn't much of a, a tidal movement, probably 0.9 in the end but uh, we end up with a few crabs. I've seen a lot of the guys actually chasing around the shallows looking for silvers. They weren't quite lucky but they tell me that the tip is for this particular coming weekend try yourself around the third creek patches for your crabs. They might be a bigger size. Also go to Port Davis area you'll find just outside by the oval you'll find your, your blue swimmer crabs and then if you started to look around that area as well you might find some squid. That's about all I've got this week. We'll see you next week. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. Locally there's been a few nice blue crabs caught, um, so down in the proper bay and also up along the North Shore. Um, guys are shifting around a bit to find the crabs at the moment, but they are a good size. There have also been some uh, gar and tommies in the local bay, and there's been a couple of schools of salmon, up to about two kilos, cruising around the bay, mainly over towards Boston Island. Moving up to Tumby Bay, there's been some nice yellowfin whiting caught on local beaches around Tumby, um, and the jetty has been yielding a few garfish and a few tommies. Down to Coffin Bay, the farm beach grounds continue to produce some whiting. Um, guys are shifting around to find those fish, but there's also a few gummy sharks in that area as well. Well, that's all for fishing tips this week. Uh, wishing everyone good fishing. We'll see you again next week.
Broken Hill motorists are being reminded to watch out for native animals wandering the streets. Warmer weather is forecast for the city next week. The local Rana branch saying emus and kangaroos may start looking for a drink. Warning drivers to keep an eye out for the local fauna as they can move very fast and appear out of nowhere. And with the weather forecast, here's Britt Aylin. Thanks Lou and good evening. It's been a mostly fine day today. Port Augusta, Broken Hill and Port Perry all with tops of 26. Wyala 23, Port Lincoln 22. Let's take a look now at the satellite images from today. With patchy jet stream clouds sweeping across the Gulf but not bringing any rain. Moving ahead to tomorrow on the Gulf waters, southeasterly winds at 15 to 20 knots with seas at 1.5 metres. Mostly sunny conditions on the forecast, looking at a top of 28 degrees at Port Augusta, Woodna, Corn, Broken Hill and Port Perry. Kadena 27, Wyala and Clare 25, Coffin Bay 24, Port Lincoln 23, Cleve 22 degrees tomorrow. To the weekend and it's looking to be partly cloudy at Port Lincoln, tops of 24 on Saturday, 29 on Sunday. Cleve partly cloudy on Saturday, warm and sunny on Sunday. Woodna looking bright and sunny across the weekend, heating up to 38 degrees on Sunday. Wyala, Port Augusta and Kadena all looking sunny both Saturday and Sunday with a warmer end to the weekend. And it's looking much the same at Port Perry, Clare and Broken Hill, all expecting a warm and sunny end to the week. And Louise, I'm looking forward to soaking up some sun on the weekend. Just got to get through tomorrow first. We'll get there. Thank you for that, Britt. And that's your local news this Thursday evening. Thank you for joining us today. We'll have updates later. Until then, have a lovely and safe evening. Good night. Thank you.